They are opening. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you for joining us on the membership track. And my name is Lane Kohama, District Membership Chair. We have a phenomenal group of speakers upcoming and let me introduce them to you. So 10 minutes per speaker. First speaker will be talking about growing your membership by PDG Laura Stilquist. Second is retaining your membership by PDG Wynne Shanamin. Third is engaging your members best practices by PE Connie Ichinose. Fourth is Engaging Your Members by President Gwen Yamamoto Lau. And fifth is Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion mm -hmm. by DEI Chair Keisha King and also PE. Mm -hmm. Mahalo again for joining us and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Wen. I mean, uh, Lane. So now we'll start with our PDG, Laura Steelquest. Well, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Sorry, I actually got stuck in the other Zoom meeting. I don't think I've ever, that's ever happened to me before. I couldn't get Benson and Dell to stop talking so I could come in here. <laughs> it was kind of exciting. And thank you, Elaine, for the introductions. And thank all of you who have joined us today to learn about growing Rotary. Uh, so the question is uh, going to be, how do we grow Rotary? And I know we're a little behind time, so I'll try to cut a couple of, of, of comments out. There are uh, actually a couple of ways that we're going to focus on. And the first is going to be growing Rotary in your own club. I should probably start my video. There we go. All righty. Now everybody can actually see me too. How exciting. Okay. So <laughs> I told you it was, it was a hard morning here. So <laughs> first we're going to talk about growing Rotary in your own club. Um, and there are, uh, hang on just one second. Okay. You guys hum to yourselves for a second. <laughs> 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 uh, good morning. Good morning. Just a few mornings. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. That's I like that, Catherine. <laughs> that was the time in our program when we dance. Oh, oh no, you don't want to see us dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good enough, right? I didn't want to ask Mark to sing because I've heard Mark sing and that doesn't work at all, right? I see, when I, I when I abandoned the other computer, so, you know, uh, Dale's still talking in the other room. I can't get out of this Zoom. I don't know what it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I abandoned my notes, which, you know, can get to be ugly when you get to be my age. Anyway, <laughs> so how is it that we do? I'm going to ask everybody if you have suggestions, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. And then at the end of the session, we will save that off and we will respond to everything after it's over. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I invite every single club to do is to set membership goals. And this should be the PE and a committee who is getting together to set the goals. Too often in so many of our clubs, the membership committee is a committee of one. And that makes it very, very difficult for everyone to get involved. While we always say everyone in the club is on the membership committee, I will tell you that a focused committee of five or six people setting goals and working on how it can be, they can be achieved is going to have a lot, lot better results. Um, I've found that what you have to do is to look at what's attainable, look at what's reasonable. You set the goals, you share these goals with your members. I love the fact that Downtown Honolulu Club for years, right in the middle of their weekly newsletter had their, their membership goal for the year and how they were achieving that goal. 
So the other thing is to track your progress toward your goal. We're all competitive people. And when we see up there that we're supposed to be getting 10 new members, and right now we have two, that's going to remind everyone that membership is important and that they could be doing their part as well. Okay. Um, then uh, as Keisha is going to talk a little bit later, right? But the next thing we need to do is to make sure that our clubs are attractive to prospective members. So that um, Keisha is going to talk about the diversity and the attractiveness of our clubs. But everybody should do a little self check to make sure that what you are, what you think you're presenting to the to the members to the visitors and prospective members is actually what they're seeing kind of do one of those little random checks that we used to do in business all the time a secret shopper as it were and then first and foremost in my opinion is pretty much exactly what uh, dge randy alluded to uh, in his video and in his message this morning Remember what Rotary is all about. It's service above self. The more you can fill the needs in your community, the more people will want to come out and join Rotary. I remember the very first meeting uh, as when I was district governor that I had with the Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay. They inducted five new members that day. One of them was actually on FaceTime, so, you know, flexibility in all things. But when I asked these mem new members why it was that they joined Rotary, they told me each different things. One of them joined because of the Honolulu Bay Pier project restoration. One joined because of the Kilauea Food Bank that the club sponsored. Another one joined because of the Grow Our Own Teachers program that kept teachers on Kauai uh, that was such a desperate need. Another one told me about all of the after school projects that were keeping at risk youth off the streets. They made a difference in their community, just like Hilo did in the whole community with the school after the, after the volcano. People were lined up to join that Rotary Club. And that day, there were actually three more members, visitors who were there who, who later became members. So that if we live our underlying motto, our service above self, and their meaningful projects to the community, something that they know is going to be helping someone, then they will come. The other thing that did is that every single weekend, the members of that Rotary Club had an option, several options of places where they could go to do good in the community. Not everybody went to every project, they couldn't possibly but there was something that attracted each member to the club. And Wynn will talk about that a little bit more later. But in my opinion, the easiest way to increase overall members in Rotary is to start new clubs. And we have such flexibility now. There are so many new different types of clubs. We can have passport clubs. We have satellite clubs. Rotaract clubs can become members of, of Rotary International now. And those satellite and Rotaract clubs make great feeder clubs for becoming full-fledged Rotary clubs. Or they can stay satellite clubs. I was talking to Jake and Frankie Jacobson from the Rotary Club of Honolulu this morning about starting a satellite Rotary Club at Arcadia because we just moved in there and they're there. And, you know, they were talking about they haven't been to Rotary in a while because they don't do Zoom. So maybe that kind of thing can happen. So think outside the box. I think the most exciting um, opportunity is going to be for cause-based clubs. 
heard right, wrote, uh, Randy talking about the uh, Rotary Club of uh, Kaka'ako, uh, Eco Rotary Club of Kaka'ako, and their dinky ball project. Yes, I'm supposed to be throwing dinky balls into the canal today, too. John's on his way in a little bit, right? But what a great project that is, and their legacy tree project. That same kind of thing can happen. We can set up environmental clubs on all of the other islands, okay? And then as well, think about other opportunities for people who are like-minded. Uh, we have the environment, we have education, peace, health, homelessness, and food insecurity. In case those sound familiar, next week there's going to be breakout sessions on each of those. So it's a great time to go and find somebody who will be a champion to start a club in this area. Wynn Shoneman was the champion for the Eco Club of, of, of Kaka'ako. Okay. So we're ready to help any and all of you set up any of these different types of clubs and help to mentor them and get them started. But you're going to have to think outside the box. You're going to have to be available to come up with the ideas and you're gonna have need to let us know. We are there for you. There are so many resources out there. If you go to Rotary D5000 and click on membership, oh my God, everything you need to know is there and links for every, every place. If you don't find it there, go to rotaryzones2627.org. More membership information, more good links. And you can go to rotary.org, myrotary.org, and go to the Learning Center, and there you'll find even more information. So that's it in a nutshell. Did I make it, Nalani? And does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Nalani is muted. She's selling me something. Yes. Uh, it's fine, Laura. Yeah, it's making the other group happy that they can cut back just to keep within our timeline. So thank you, Laura, for that. And I'd like to introduce Wynn Choneman to go with re retain membership, retention. Good morning, everybody. Morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Welcome. Uh, so I do have a, a, a slide show. Uh, it kind of keeps me on track with uh, membership retention and uh, Imagine Rotary. And I, there's a couple things that I would like to echo with uh, Laura and Randy over the course of this. Um, so membership retention um, is probably could be our membership is our number one focus. And membership retention is one of the keys to growing membership, along with new club development. Uh oh, <clears throat> so I know that membership and retention is important to you. The question that I have for all of our people in the audience today or, or in our group today is how important is it to you and your club? Is it a priority or is it something that just kind of happens? Mm -hmm. So let me try to. Mm -hmm. so, I, I've got some statistics to, to, to show you about how important it really should be to you. So in 19 or 2018, we started with 1,666 members in the district. Since 2018, we have lost 725 of those who were present in 2018. We have readmitted 87. And we've added 669 new members. So we don't have a problem bringing new members into Rotary. We have a problem keeping them because we have 725. Of those new members that we brought into Rotary, we have already lost 219 of those. So basically one third, 30%, 33% of our member of our new members we've already lost. Since then, we've readmitted eight of those. And our current membership stands at 1,486. That's, a, that's an astounding and graphically an, an astounding picture of where we're at in the district. <clears throat> and every club has added at least one new member in the last three years, but every club has also lost members. And I'm not going to speak to why members leave, but let's talk about why members stay. 
So membership retention, try to put it in a positive, not how many we've lost, but we have kept 61.7% of our members. And with new members, we've kept 68.4% of our members. How, what, what would it take for us to get to 75% retention or 80% or retention in terms of the, the district? And it takes each club doing its part. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I started out when I started doing this, some ideas on what we can do to enhance membership retention or, or keep, keep members in our clubs. And I, I went the other direction on this and I, you know, recognizing that each club is different. And I've got a series of questions that, that I would like you to, to think about, to ponder, you know, maybe write down a question that speaks to you specifically. Does my club have a membership action plan? So do I actually have something written down of what we're going to do over the course of the year? Or do we just kind of shoot from the hip and we do an event here, an event there uh, to attract new members? And then when people, uh, you know, the last, the last two months of the year, uh, we start looking to see who is leaving Rotary, who hasn't been there. Do we have a real action plan for the for the uh, for our club? Because the old the old adage is a, a, a failure is a plan is a plan to fail. So I would you know think about that for a moment. Does my club have a membership action plan? One of the questions that regularly comes up is: Do my members feel valued? And another way to ask this is: Are my members getting full value from Rotary? We know that we have lost two thirds or, or one third of new members coming in. And we have to ask our question, why are they leaving? And there are a whole variety of answers for that. Is my club working to increase our impact globally, locally? Imagine that Randy was talking about doing projects that, that connect with the public image and, and media. Are we doing projects that are visible and are, are projects what our members value or are they a project that somebody just kind of comes up with and this is what we're going to do? How much does my club budget for membership? Does any club budget anything for membership? How is it that, that we, we grow Rotary and retain our members without having some kind of budget? Here's a great question. Which avenue of service affects membership retention? And do we put as much time, energy, and resources into club service as we do community service? And if we don't, what, what are our expectations? Is our new member program vibrant with a prospective member interview? an enhanced induction ceremony, a formal new member orientation, including a new member checklist, and a long, a year long mentoring program with qualified mentors. So when there's a lot of times questions come up about this, I was talking to somebody the other day about, you know, do you give a new member a certificate in a folder, a membership certificate in a folder, or do you put it in a picture frame? If you give it to a, give you them the, a new member a certificate in a folder, where do you think it's going? Probably going in a in a file or in the round file, or it's being stacked with a another stack of papers. If you put it in a picture frame, where does it gotta go? And they, they have to do a lot of work to take it out of the picture frame. So it's gonna sit on their desk or on their wall somewhere where it's visible to remind them, hey, I've got a rotary meeting this week. Couple more quick questions. <clears throat> Does my club have a formal review committee to improve our ability to engage both old and new members? We focused a lot on, new, uh, uh, on young members uh, recently in the last few years. But what about those people that have been in Rotary forever and, and a day and are now getting to that age? And as Laura said, looking at doing a satellite club, how do we encourage that? 
that they stay members of our clubs, but meet their needs. And does my club offer variety or are we doing the same old thing over and over again, expecting different results naturally? And what are the demographics of my club? Keisha would, I'm sure, appreciate this. What are the demographics of my club compared to my community? Where can we improve our diversity in our clubs? And does my club have a formal rotary education plan? These are all questions that I think you can ask yourself and see where it is that you can help your club uh, continue to grow. Does my club find out at the last minute who's not renewing membership? You know, years ago, we used to have a, uh, uh, we used to keep track of attendance and membership and, and, you know, you could see clearly who wasn't attending meetings or participating in service. And we don't really have that nowadays. So who is responsible in your club to look out for those that are MIA, missing in action? And does my club have a membership goal? <clears throat> Laura put that out there very succinctly. <clears throat> have my members participated in developing this goal? And who's tracking it? Who's letting everybody know? So the <clears throat> So that, that really concludes, I didn't wanna you know, put out their information necessarily. Who's got any questions? Are there any questions? Nal Nalani, do we have any questions? No questions? Because I, I can't a question. say. I yeah. have a question. Uh -huh. um, you stated when that um, members need to feel value. Mm -hmm. how, do, how, do you, how do you put that into action? Oh, you, you know, we could have we could have an hours long conversation about that. So um, so let me go back to quick sharing my screen real quick um, and I can I can really wrap that up for you succinctly. Um, because it's the very last slide, really. So here are your quick takeaways. So how do you put that into succinctly? I mean, you'll know if members are feeling valued if, if they're uh, or not feeling valued if they don't show up. But by engaging your members regularly and talking with them, you'll get a sense if they're, if they're uh, valued or not. So the quick takeaways for that are, is are we increasing our impact? Are we partnering with other Rotary Clubs to do projects that are uh, impactful and visible? You know, a lot of small clubs out there say, well, we don't have the resources to do, uh, you know, large, uh, 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 impactful projects. You know, we, we got to do what we, what, we, what we do. But by partnering with other clubs in your area or by partnering, you know, and I like the, really like the idea of an eco rotary club on each island because I could really envision eco rotary clubs partnering across the water uh, and doing impactful projects. Uh, but, you know, increasing your impact and partnering with others uh, and other nonprofits in the, in, the, in the locale is a great way to increase your impact. Uh, enhance participant engagement. If you know that your members are engaged and showing up at projects, not just at meetings, but at projects and uh, uh, reaching out and, and participating. Um, expanding our reach, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oftentimes, I think we look at uh, expanding our reach as, as going further into the community, but really it's building a more diverse, it could be building a more diverse membership uh, in our club uh, and increasing our ability to adapt. And I think how well you accomplish these four things, Catherine, uh, will determine membership and determine the satisfaction that your memberships feel that membership is and, and how well they and how they feel about your club. Does that kind of answer your question? It does. It helps. Thank you. Yeah. So so really a focal point, I think, and every time, every time we do a service project, we should ask ourselves the question: Am I increasing my impact? Uh, are we increasing our engagement of our members uh, and, and increasing the engagement in our community? Are we expanding our reach uh, with new members and, and reaching out to them? And are we uh, you know, doing this with uh, not just diversity of people and members, but how about diversity of ideas? Are we accept, accept it, of, uh, accepting new ideas into our club 
or we shut them down at the, the very onset? Great question. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Wynn, very much for that presentation. Now I'd like to uh, introduce Connie, and she'll be speaking about best practices. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to talk a little bit and I'm going to talk real fast because I have a lot of stuff and I do want to hear from ideas from all of you guys as well. And I know we're running a little bit behind, but there are talk about maybe best practices and some ideas for engaging members. And um, as DGE Randy had said, and Wynn had mentioned it as well, is that community service is one of the main reasons Rotarians um, want to do, they want to give back to our community. And so that's a great way to engage members and probably the number one way to engage members. And um, as you guys know that um, membership kind of kind of overlaps over all parts of our club. And, um, and so, so does retention as well. So engagement does speak to all retention as well. So I'm not gonna um, go into too much on community service because you guys all have great ideas for that. And we can share, I wanna hear some of that too, but I'm gonna move on because I know we're running a little bit behind uh, because another really good way to engage members is during socials and membership mixers. And, um, you know, bars, restaurants, those are great ways to uh, venues for the event. But you can also try to think, um, be creative and think outside the box. And I'll give you an example. Um, once we rented out the Palace Theater in Hilo, and, um, and um, that's like a historic historic theater that we have in Hilo. And what we did was we had a silent movie night. So everybody dressed up in their 1920s outfits and we had uh, the concession open, we had poo-poos and drinks. And then we, we hired the organist to come in and, and you know, and kind of explain how silent movies are made. And then um, we had, you know, it was just fun. People went in and watched the silent movies, came out, enjoyed. Another thing we did was we rented out um, uh, historic art center for Valentine's Day. And we had, you know, everybody come in and then the, the staff stayed a little bit later and they gave us a private tour of the art center. Then we went upstairs to this beautiful patio overlooking the park and had poo-poos. We had, because it was Valentine's Day, we had a uh, Valentine's Day photo booth. We played games. We had um, an expert whiskey and sake person come and they did tastings for us. And, um, and like a game you can play that we played that night that's real easy to do is, um, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of Have You Ever. It's fun because you get a paddle. One side says, I have. The other one says, the other side says, I have not. And then the couples come up. Each one has a paddle. And then you ask them silly questions. And, and you know, that's the thing. You know, sometimes we're so, we're so serious in Rotary. You know, sometimes we got to be silly and fun. So you ask them silly questions and they hold the paddle this way or that way and everybody laughs and has a good time. It was a great time. So um, keep that in your head because I want you guys to, to also share ideas that you guys have done, fun, creative things that you guys have done because that's how we learn is through from each other. Um, and the same way I forgot to say that, you know, that anytime you have a community service project and you work side by side with someone, that's when you engage with people and you get to know them. And that's the whole idea of engagement is the building relationships with, with other members and also with potential members. Another way, and it's a very easy way that we can um, engage members is through our regular meetings. And um, I don't want to say that rotary meetings are boring or stiff or any of that. I don't want to say that, but you know, it's always great to kind of insert a little short fun thing here and there that kind of engages members, kind of gets people, wakes them up a little bit, you know. And so the traditional ones that everybody does that is that are always fun and just easy to do are like two truths and a lie. You can do rotary. Ro Rotary trivia, you can do member trivia, you know, things like that. One thing that we did that kind of worked really well was, um, and it, um, it's, um, we formed a, a committee called the TLC, TLC, Team TLC. And what that was, was a group of Rotarians, and some of them were, you know, longtime Rotarians who have not been as active as they used to be. But this 
this committee would, their, their responsibility was to kind of watch out and see when you have a new member come in or a member that, um, a potential member, and they see where they're seated and they go and situate themselves on their table, at their table, and they just, you know, they have a wealth of rotary knowledge, they can share, they can welcome them, they can talk to them, they can answer questions. And so, you know, it works on it two levels. And like the question was before, how do we make, you know, bring value? And, you know, we want to value our members so that, that the members on the team feel a value because they're helping the club in some way. And the, the potential members or the new members that are sitting there, they feel the aloha from our club and they feel welcome, they feel warmth. And so it works both ways. So those are um, some, you know, some ways that we can we can engage at meetings. So I kind of, with whatever time is left, and maybe um, Milani, you can give the, the signal. But if you guys could raise your hands and share of the different the different things that you've that have worked for your club or for you in community service, as far as engaging members in. Um, in socials and at the meetings. So, and if you have any questions on any of these ideas, put it in the chat and we can try to get to that. Okay, so let's open it up for anybody who has questions. I cannot see the hand, let me try to get to the gallery. Connie, Connie. Hi, Helene. Hello, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to add um, because I'm, I'm in your club. The um the Go Cookum gang. Yes. You know that I wanted, is, I wanted to mention that, but I didn't know. But please do, please talk yeah, about Yeah, because it. that um that combines community service with having a lot of fun. I mean, you know, we really made we really bonded the, the group of us at, at we we cook for um Hawaii Island Home for Recovery every Thursday. We cook a hot lunch for them. And uh I think we have too much fun. <laughs> So we have become very close. So I don't think any of those members are going to leave, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah. And you know um, what uh, Helene is talking about it, it, it as as far as best practices go, it has come to be a practice that we invite new members to that small project because it's small and it's intimate and it's personal. We get, it's a way to get to know them, and other members have brought in potential members there because it's a great way to meet members one on one. So yeah, thank you for sharing that, Helene. Anybody else? I know you guys have great ideas and you guys have done some fun things in your club. Um, we just did a, a tour of a local bee farm and uh, they did a, one, um, a honey tasting afterwards and they let us set up in the gazebo. And it was great because it was actually um, several of our members that have been there for a long time and then a new member and she brought a guest and it not only felt like it reinvigorated some of the old members' interest and kind of pulled them more into the belonging with the club, but then I feel like we ge definitely generated some new member interest too, and it supported a local business. So um, yeah, d the power of the social yes, is huge. Yes. It, and it worked on so many levels in your case, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I know Bonnie, there's more. Have time for one more question. Okay, one more. Okay, uh, is that Catherine? Yes. One of the projects that we have done, which got a lot of publicity, by the way, for the Rotary, is the shoe boxes for the homeless. And it went over a period of months. We began it months before. Uh, somebody went to the shoe store and started collecting shoe boxes. So they had their garage full of 132 shoe boxes. Um, but then the members, be, I, I purchased hand, handmade how to make ornaments so that the shoe boxes weren't just, you know, food for the homeless. It was candy canes and Christmas decorations and things that the members could make to contribute. And one of our members bought soft um, towels, hand towels wrapped in a scented soap. And there, there were things that it was actually a Christmas gift. Well, the media enjoyed that. So they came in and videotaped the people while they were wrapping the Christmas boxes. Um, they saw all the stacked boxes when they were finished. It made it in the media, it made it into the newspaper. And that brought really positive 
feedback from the community. I think that's something that all of us could do. Just yeah. a suggestion. Yeah. Fabulous. No, fabulous. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. And um, if there's anything in the chat, we'll go look at it. But thank you. Thank you, Connie. Next, we have Gwen. Thank you so much, Nalani. First of all, I am so intimidated having to follow Connie, our District 5000 membership diva, as well as the rest of the uh, seasoned Rotarian leaders. Secondly, as, as we all know, there are multiple ways to engage members and the Honolulu Club is learning alongside with you. And Lane has asked me to share just one club's membership engagement journey. Well, our club is no different from any other and we are struggling with the same issues and there is no right way or one way. My sharing this morning comes from the perspective of applying, of applying best practices to see if it worked or not. This is kind of like testing to see if your spaghetti noodles are cooked. You throw it and if it sticks to the wall, it's done perfectly, you continue doing it. If it doesn't stick, you try something else. Being a recovering banker and kind of a data geek, we started this Rotary year doing some analysis and found that over, 50, over half or 54% of our members were over 65 years old. 30% between 45 to 65 years old and 16% under 65 years old. We also found that over 80% of our members paid their dues quarterly with a credit card. Like Wynn mentioned, while we recruited new members every year, we weren't successful in retaining them, resulting in a an alarming trend of our membership decreasing from 160 in fiscal 28, I'm sorry, 100, uh, 160 in, in fiscal 2018 to 156 in fiscal 2019 to 145 in fiscal 20 to 137 in fiscal 21, and finally to 130 at the start of this current fiscal year, representing a 19% decrease in our members over the past five years. Based on this trend, our goal was to end this membership year with a net membership count of 124, or a net negative of six, instead of the average eight negative members lost in the, over the previous years. So why am I spewing all of this data? It's because data tells us a part of the story to help us better understand how we might be of service to and provide value to our members. As you know, there are many organizations, service, leadership, social organizations that our members could belong to. So we are truly grateful that they choose to be a member of our Rotary Club. And as with anything else, it takes a village to recruit, retain and engage members. And we have an amazing leadership team. Our engagement doesn't start when they become a member, it starts before they become a member. We have found that some of our best members have come to us through our service projects, which is why it's important to offer a variety so that our members can choose to participate in the ones that resonate with them. A number of new members have joined as a result of volunteering at our monthly Centennial Park weeding weedy event. Our international service project has also been a great way to engage volunteers who then decide, decide to become members. In fact, on Cohio Day, Don Anderson arranged a luncheon with a, com a community volunteer who accompanied our club on a couple of our Philippines and Nepal projects over the years and have now decided to join. He brought with him three of his employees to also learn about Rotary. We offer a number of Rotary Action Team or Rat Pack projects during the year, such as painting Lula Lila homes or renovating the community room for at-risk youth for the Friends of for Restorative Justice. But not all of our members, myself included, are hammer and nail types. Therefore, we also have options for judging Olelo Peacemaker videos or judging the HRYF or Will Henderson, Will Henderson scholarship applications. And we're also looking forward to next fiscal year when we can restart our literacy programs in Kalihi. You know, it's thanks to the foresight, love and care of our past leaders who created an endowment to honor the daughter of member Rob Hale who perished in the 9-11 World Trade Center attack. Coupled with the generosity of our members whom we asked to give only once a year with our service above self campaign. This endowment has since grown to $2.5 million and provides funds for service projects. 
Mighty Hill's legacy lives on every year as we invest some $90,000 in our community through our service projects annually. We are also hoping to increase member engagement by having members recommend service projects for nonprofits or initiatives that are near and dear to their hearts. President-elect Lila held her kickoff meeting last Saturday, and we are asking our members to submit service project recommendations to implement for the upcoming Rotary year. Our membership recruitment director, Erin Auerbach, membership retention director, Bob Sump, and past president club trainer, Rich Proctor, have done an amazing job with our Palhana socials, which serve to recruit new members as well as fellowship for existing members. It's kind of like speed dating. Prospects get to know us and we get to know them. Erin is also amazing at the follow-up and connecting one-on-one -on -one with prospects to share our Rhodey values and answer questions. Our weekly programs are another way to engage members. And under the leadership of Beth Kozlovich, program director, we have been fortunate to provide our members with interesting programs. While I have enjoyed all of them, some of my favorites this year have been Catherine Payne, Board of Education, George Kahn, T-shirt theater, Zach Noyle, surf photographer, and General Eric Shinseki. Similar to asking our members for service project suggestions, we actively ask our members to recommend speakers, which our program committee vets and schedules on a regular basis. I believe the more opportunities we provide our members to give input and be heard, the more engaged they become. As mentioned by Wynn, we have, in, we have intentionally sought opportunities to partner with other Rotary Clubs and other non-Rotary organizations in programs and service projects this year to nurture and develop stronger relationships while increasing impact. Lastly, in an effort to engage members, but more importantly, to create a bench for future leaders, we're asking our board members to identify lieutenants, lieutenants to train and mentor and create a succession plan. This is on every board meeting agenda and will remain on the agenda until the lieutenant is identified. And this has been hard for some of our directors. I think sometimes we are hesitant to ask because we don't want to impose without realizing that most members are honored to be asked and happy to help. So where are, while we're, the year isn't over yet, where are we? With 80% of our members previously paying by credit card, in order to decrease the amount of work necessary to in, send out invoices and ask for, for permission to charge and transact, transact the charge uh, on a quarterly basis, and then pay that merchant services fee, we gave our members the option to get a 5% discount, which is roughly the equivalent of the merchant's fee, so it was budget neutral, if they pay the entire dues by check in July. Thus, the $680 annual dues became $646, and almost half or 46% of our members took advantage of this option. As mentioned, under Aaron, Bob, and Rich's amazing leadership, while we have lost five members during this year thus far, we've inducted 12 new members to date, and we're scheduled to induct four more new members in April and have four to five members prospects in, in the queue for May or June. In analyzing our data, 91% of our members are engaged in one way or another, some by coming to meetings, some by volunteering for projects, and some by giving generously. Understanding the wide range of members we have, especially with our age difference, why we would love to have all members actively engaged in doing all the things, we realize that members engage differently and we are truly grateful for the engagement in the form and in the manner that they choose to engage. Lastly, while they might not invite me to speak again after this, I just wanted to share some of the discussions that we've been having regarding recruiting members. You know, in the past, we cast a wide net, practically begging any and all to join. Then we were disappointed when they didn't come to meetings, didn't volunteer for projects, didn't give during an annual meeting, our annual service above self-campaign, and finally, when they didn't pay our, their dues. We believe that Rotary has a lot to offer, and we have decided that quality is more important than quantity. As we chat with prospects, if they are too busy to attend meetings or volunteer for projects, or just starting out, or buying a new home and don't have the financial wherewithal to donate, then perhaps Rotary is not a good for them at this time. Definitely when things, things change for them, we're hoping that they keep Rotary in mind in the future. Also like our workplace, retaining our, the employees who display the values and culture along to our, with the, your company is critical. Similarly, retaining members aligned with the culture and values of our club is important. Having a rogue member may be disruptive. As such, we recently managed a member not living the four-way test out. 
While we don't want to lose any member, we believe that it is our responsibility to ensure the well-being of all of our members aligned to Rotary values. Any questions? If not, thank you so much for allowing me to spend this morning with you. Thank you, Gwen. So we're going to close the session uh, with uh, Keisha on DEI. Keisha? Okay, hey, thank you. So I have until 1015, so I'm going to move expeditiously. Uh, let's see if I can share my screen. You all should be able to see that, yes? Yes, you can. I, I, I can't see anyone. Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to be very, very quick. Um, and when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to skip to, I put a lot of work into these slides, but I'm going to skip right on to the end. Um, we know that this is a major focal point for Randy and for Jennifer Jones. So I will be happy to present this to you or your club at any time. Feel free to give me um, a call or a text. I'll put my information in the, um, the chat box. Initially, when we think about diversity, however, we look at race, gender, age, language, but there's so much more going on, as you can see, um, when we look at the diversity iceberg, 80% of what makes us who we are, you can't see. So it's beyond the basics. It includes things such as our thinking styles, our experiences, certainly our culture, but also our physical abilities and job levels, our sexual orientation, gender, skills. They all play an important role in um, what diversity means. Inclusion is the achievement of a club environment in which all individuals are treated fairly and respectfully and have equal access to opportunities and resources and can contribute fully contribute. to a club's success. Uh, when we talk about equality versus equity, this graphic puts it very plainly. If we simply give everyone a bike, same size fits all, or one size fits all, that's not really an accurate statement. We need a size that fits to someone's specific needs. That gives everyone a sense of belonging, okay? There are tons of benefits of diversity, but it does, it has been proven to increase member retention rates. Um, it does uh, hopefully boost uh, club morale. And of course, it's simply the right thing to do. So you say, how do we do this? This is how we do it. We simply follow our four-way test, which is ultimately what we believe in anyway. And so you can join our task force. Our meetings are the first Thursday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Right now, they're via Zoom. We have some focal points. We have an education subcommittee, resources and tools committee, and then an outreach committee. Everyone is a part of our task force because everyone is responsible for it. These are some of the enablers that we have that will help us in being a bit more diverse. And I'll, again, I'm happy to share this with you um, in your clubs, at your meetings um, more extensively. But you might want to start with asking yourself some of these questions. Um, what has been, what is my club's rotary experience like with diversity, equity, and inclusion? Uh, what do I need to know of, um, about the diverse makeup of our community? So the statistics that Wynn gave us was really, really insightful. Then you need to do that with your community and your club. And then you need to know, ask, what more do we need to learn about uh, to overcome our DEI challenges after you assess what they may be? And then what actions can our club take to expand the reach of, the, of Rotary and be more inclusive? So here are a list of different things that you can do. You can practice, contribute, recognize, respect, think before speaking, engage others, and eliminate bias. I'll be happy at another time to go into that more, uh, more in depth. Uh, the three ma main focal areas that I've presented to the task force is strategic partnerships with other organizations, um, education, which should go both ways. We're teaching them, but they're also teaching us, whoever them and us are, okay? And then intentionality. We need to do that with and be intentional in our efforts. This is, again, I may have mentioned this in the part one of our meeting, what 
is diversity and what does it mean to be inclusive? And I won't open the floor for questions um, because of time, but I'll simply say that if we're all doing our part and if we're all um, respectful and mindful of what needs to be done, then certainly we will have more uh, diversity and certainly more membership retention. Um, the way our meeting went this morning was not very diverse. The black girl got cut out. That's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> but I don't mean any harm by saying that. If you know my personality, you know I'm just kidding. But again, you do want to be mindful of all those different types of things. And I'm very, very happy to, that you uh, took the time to listen this morning and thank you for the opportunity to share. Keisha, we saved the best for last. <laughs> so anyway, thank you everyone for being here. Like I said, we're going to uh, have their email address in the chat. If you have questions and need to reach out, please do so. And thank you so much presenters for all the time you put into making your presentation, your slides and your and uh, the information that you gave. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of the day with the next Zoom meeting. Thank you, Nalani. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Keisha. Great job. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Wynn. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Keisha. <laughs> Wynn, that was fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all. Ani, that was always great. You're always great. <laughs> Thanks for babysitting everybody, Mark. <laughs>